everyone and my capstone is an apple grading machine so a little bit about this background my former business colleague approached me with a request to make a sorting machine for their agricultural goods that they are exporting and what he was really thinking was a very simple uh, and durable affordable uh, machine with a low maintenance cost and accessible building materials. And the last point was particularly important for them as they had an experience with these very high-end machines and when they broke or some part of them were broke, they were, had the problems with the finding that part and shipping it here and they were losing money during this process. So I started my research from how the system of the working principle would be so they had these cargo cars which were moving 500 kilogram boxes uh, to the actual machine which was going to be built. So it has to have an unloader which will unload it to the system, then an inclined intermediate platform and a conveyor line and a sorting chamber. So this is how it should be. The unloader, intermediate platform, conveyor line, sorting chamber and then the boxes where it should be sorted. So, I started uh, the research part, the second research part was about the actual sorting chambers and the types of them. The first one is tram camera, turbular chamber, inclined bed and a hemispherical drum. So I will show you some of them. The drum camera, it's actually a drum that is rotating and has a different sizes of holes in it. And while it rotates, object passes through it and when it matches the size of the holes, it gets, it falls down to the boxes, as you can see here, and the sorting takes place. Okay, the second type is a turbular chamber, where we have these tubes that are connected to the motors, and some part of them are rotating clockwise, the other ones counterclockwise, and in a different distances, they have different gaps between them. So when the object approaches to the gap with it, which matches the size of it, it falls down to the boxes, so it sorts. The third type is an inclined belt. It's actually a conveyor line that moves the object and then the other part of conveyor line has a gate in front of it and after the gate you have the boxes. So the fourth type is the type that I choose is an hemispherical sorter. This has an hemispherical object in between the boxes and we have the gate in front of it and by regulating the sizes of the gates you are allowing to pass certain sizes and others not to. So after this part I have to select the materials and the devices for this machine and that's actually the motor, the reductor of, for that motor and the driver and those three are kind of interconnected. The other part, the, the other thing was the conveyor belt. As for a different applications, we need a different kind of belts and di with different thicknesses and different kind of uh, thicknesses or how, how many rubber should be there in order to make sure that the thing should actually be sticking to the conveyor line and not to slide in its place. The, four, uh, the fifth thing actually was the metal type. I was thinking of making it with a stainless steel, but that is, as it is hard to process, hard to work with, uh, and it's costly, I choose another type, regular metal, but as these regular metals have a problems of rust, I thought on having epoxy-based paint on it so we can avoid these kind of problems. So, the client told that they already have an up unloader, so my design was not including the design of it doesn't include the un unloading part and I made it like a Lego so you have to can assemble and disassemble it every time you want without as with uh, as less weldings as possible so we can av avoid the transportation issues as it is also big so the first part is the intermediate platform I achieved this that there are these two plates first of which is 2.5 degree and the second 5 and I get these degrees after the experimentations so I could get the needed amount of speed before the conveyor line. Second part, this 
all of those are the renders of my project. So uh, this is the conveyor line, the length of which is four meters, and there is this motor reductor, etc., etc. There, and actually the sorting chamber. So here is it. It goes here, comes, and these are those are the gates and the boxes. And after these, you have another boxes where you can place them after being sorted. So. As the deadlines of the real project and my capstone didn't match, I decided to have a mock-up of the device here. And uh -huh. I'm sorry. And as I already know how the system would work, I just need to replace the actual <coughs> elements that I choose from a, for a bigger one with a smaller type of things. And that was the Arduino Uno as the brain, as the main part. The TT motor was to replace the drive, uh, the motor and the reductor, and we have the smaller <laughs> driver here. So I also decided to make the unloader part and use the servo motor for it. The power source and ABS as a main building material for 3D printing. During this design process, I had when you are scaling down something or when you are making a mock-up, there are slight changes in everything, starting from the joints, from the materials. And one of the problems that I arrived was that for the bigger part, the conveyor belt was going to be made by someone who is doing that. But for this size, there was no one that could make it. So I changed it with the resin and made it by myself. So. This is the rents of a design of the mock-up for the mock-up. <laughs> and now I can demonstrate how it works. <coughs> I'm not the best loader. That, so this is the load with supposedly 500 kilograms of FO. I moved it so it may be a little bit of problem of calibration, but I hope it will work. This is due to the incarnation of this table and the calibration that I saw that I didn't do beforehand. This is too big. There are no efforts at this size. <laughs> That's it. And if you have questions, please, you are welcome to ask. There is another bigger project that yeah. you're doing except the capstone. <coughs> yeah. which, like the client that you told, it's not a virtual one. So there is no, no, it's, it's a real one. Okay, so if we shift from the prototype to the real one, uh, there are two questions. What is the control unit that you are going to use there, like instead of Arduino? And then uh, what are the types of, the, like you have got their valves after the sorting machine that, that will be opening and closing. No, it's or not. There, there is no need of valve. You mean this part? Yeah, that part. No, I am. This is not about this gate, and I'm regulating sizes of it like this. And for the first part, it is there still under the discussion, but it probably will be the Raspberry Pi industrial version, or maybe a simpler one, because you can see everything is mechanical here. I want so that that's the simplest one possible, but so it will be reliable. Okay, I got the answers. Thank you. Do you have anything else to open? <laughs> no, it's, uh, I was assuming it's going to be with some camera or something. That I just now I realized it's all mechanical. So it, it's all mechanical. Yes. Simple it is. That's more reliable. Mm. Just, just a question. Um, do you know what is a digital twin? No. There is a concept of more complicated. 
and machineries. You know that there. You know it's Siemens is mostly uh, in this business with Nvidia Omniverse now. It's very interesting to read that you can actually build this in a computer, a digital twin of this, and then launch it there and see how it works. If there are any problems that you can fix it, it's, it's a simulation. It's simulation. It's for simulate everything. It's, it's even there now simulating like the BMW factory, the whole factory. Mm -hmm. and so that's very okay. can be a very interesting topic for you to uh, to read about. I will and see how much says from what scale it makes sense for you to go into the digital twins to have this virtually working and see where you have problems like heating pieces, for example, since it's mechanical, where you have, like, you know, hot spots for, needs more attention. I actually so. have done a mechanical simulation with SolidWorks, but it is very limited. It's only mechanical sometimes. No, that there is a part for the heating and etc. etc. but it doesn't consider what kind of electronics do you use, what kind of motors do you use, it's just mechanical. And, and maybe that's a better version. Thank you. Thank you.